What, what does Ashtanga yoga and um, an octopus have in common? Eight. Eight. Yay! Well done. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Ashtanga yoga is, 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 um, is, although I said quite recently that it's a very fairly recent um, product of the yoga factory, for want of a better word, you know, this sort of mid 1970s sort of time. Um, Ashtanga yoga, the philosophy, goes back way, 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 I think about 800, 600 BC or, or common era. And it's based on these eight levels um, of practice, of which what we mostly do, the poses, are one of them. So there's seven other elements of practicing yoga and we don't talk about those at all really usually and I just want to to chip away I'm not going to give us a syllabus or anything but there is there is one there's there is maybe two elements of those eight that are more accessible and they're called the yama and the niyama and the yama is actually the first rung of this ladder and it's about ethical disciplines. So obviously when we're on the mat, coming here is a discipline in itself. And I often say about yoga off the mat, you take discipline with you. But I want to, um, we want to integrate these practices really. And the first, the very sort of first step or towards the first step of the ladder of Ashtanga yoga is called Ahimsa. And I don't know if any of you have heard of that before. That's the Sanskrit term for no harm or peace. And in your practice, um, this can be applied by what I was mentioning with Carol, just brief Carol briefly just then, is this sense of back away from pain. And also back away from pushing yourselves. Now, I don't know if any of you have done any kind of work on inner voices or um, identifying certain trends of thought patterns, but we often, all of us, have this sense of Mara or inner critic. And when we come across this inner critic in our practice, it can be really quite harsh on us. Um, and I just was prompted by something that I saw this week on Instagram, um, where it said, do you know what? Lockdown calories, a few extra pounds, so what if your genes don't fit? You have just lived through one of the most challenging periods of our times, okay? So what that is that is so beautifully encapsulating is that sense of kindness to ourselves and how to counteract that critical, judgmental tone that can often arise in our minds and come back at it with a sort of positivity. So I really want you to take your chance on your map today to find your edge and when you're there really enjoy it you know imagine that you know in 40 50 years maybe even in 10 years time we don't know if we can do these practices any longer so let's make the most of it now and um and try and find when i say your edge i don't want you to be um sort of terrified and clinging on to this cliffhanger edge I want you to stand at the top of that cliff and look in and take in the view. I take a nice deep breath and enjoy the edge. Yeah, so it's not white knuckles, adrenaline style edge. <laughs> okay, so thank you for listening and I'm glad you did because we've been able to welcome a couple more people during that introduction. So, practicing with Ahimsa, non harm, acceptance, kindness to yourselves. And of course, the more kindness you can cultivate to yourself, blah, the wider it radiates, okay? No actions are simply just local. Everything has this ripple effect. Can you take your stand at the top of the mat, feet together, arms relaxed down by the side, Tadasana. Let the weight fall into your heels, spread the weight to the outer edge of the little toe and the base of the big toe. So you have this triangle through which you rise up from the earth. Inhale, let the arms rise up, take the gaze to the thumbs, relax the shoulders, draw in the navel, exhale, forward fold. Place the palms or come to your fingertips. Inhale, halfway lift, roll the shoulders away from the ears, lift the chin. Exhale, bend the knees, place the palms, step your left leg back, 
Lower the left knee down, untuck the back toes. Inhale, lift up, take the gaze to the thumb. And Jani Asana. Exhale, place the palms, step the knees back. So they're now meeting and lower the chin and the chest. Inhale, cobra. Hold that cobra just there. Just need to let somebody in. <laughs> and in your cobra, make sure you keep your elbows planted into the side of the body, press the toes into the mat, hover the palms, exhale, hold it for two more breaths. Inhale, knees are lifted, and you've also got the sense of abdominal engagement. Exhale, one more breath, inhale, sit the legs together, relax the bum so you're not trapping the lower back. Exhale, place the palms, tuck the toes, Send the hips back towards the heels. Spread the fingertips. Inhale from the armpits to the fingertips. And then exhale. Just come onto all fours. Drop the belly. Inhale, draw the chest through the arms. Look up. Exhale, take the gaze to the navel. Round the back. Cat cow. Inhale, draw the chest forward through the arms. Look up. Exhale, ripple your vertebra. Feel the movement in the spine as you take your gaze to your navel. Inhale. Use your own breath here. So when you're ready at the top of your inhalation, you can start to ripple and curl. Exhale. Two more breaths. Inhale. Ripple forwards and exhale. Inhale, round. One more time, inhale, draw forward so you coordinate the breath and the movement. This is vinyasa. Exhale, round through the spine. Tuck the toes of the, of the right foot and step, sorry, pardon, suck toes of the left foot, step the right foot forward in between the palms. Inhale, Anjani Asana on the opposite side, look up to the palms. Exhale, place the palms either side of the front foot, tuck the back toe, step the feet together, inhale to a halfway lift, and then exhale, draw down to the to your legs. So you can bend your knees and let your chest rest on your thighs, just shake out the head, and maybe blubber your lips a bit. <laughs> Release your tongue, it's gonna make you smile, that's awesome. Push through the feet, inhale, let the arms lift, Exhale, palms back down to the side, to Tadasana. Inhale, look up, lift up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale to a halfway lift. Exhale, place the palms. Step or hop back into plank. Lower down. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Five of your own breath. As you do your breaths, can you please make the following adjustments? Please be sure that your thumbs are straight, so they push straightness through them. You really feel the knuckle of the thumb presses down into the earth. Check that your fingers are spread and your middle finger points forward. Roll your shoulders away from your ears, your shoulder blades together and down the back towards the waist. Draw the sit bones together. Feel how that lifts the navel. Push the heels down towards the floor, no bother if they don't reach. At the base of your fifth exhalation, bend the knees, keep the gaze lifted to the front of the mat, hop or step to the top. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, fold. Inhale, draw up, look up to the palms. Exhale, release. Inhale, here we go again. Sun salutation, n times three. Exhale, forward, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bend the knees, step or hop to the back of the mat into the plank. Lower it down. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. Remember, upward dog, your thighs and knees are lifted off the floor. Exhale into your downward facing dog. Let's just walk the dog here. So try and remember your alignment tips 
but introduce a little lubrication through the backs of the legs. Hopefully you build up a little bit of heat as you do so. Take the knees out to the left hand side, let the gaze go underneath the left armpit. And when you're ready, inhale the knees back to the center and exhale over to the opposite side. One more time, inhale the knees back to the center. Take two more of your own breaths to steady and feel the stillness here. So let all the fidgeting settle. At the base of that second inhale exhalation, gaze to the top of the mat. Then the knees keep the hips lifted, hop or step. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, draw up, look up to the palms, exhale, release. Right, let's go into two sun salutation beads. Inhale, keep the navel drawing in and up. So this is your Uddiyana Bandha. This is where your navel lifts, your diaphragm lifts. Exhale, sit down into your imaginary chair. Keep that lift in the navel. Inhale, the arms draw forwards and then slightly up. So the palms pointing up towards where the ceiling and the wall meet. Exhale, you can allow that to soften as you unfold down to the ground. Inhale, draw up, halfway lift. Exhale, can you place your palms, bend your knees and step back into plank. Lower down like a stick, keep nice and steady, elbows into the chest. Inhale, upwards up, roll the shoulders away from the ears, lift the chest, let it shine. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, pick the right foot up. Take it over to the right side of your mat, just behind your rib. Point your left toes out to about 11 o'clock. With your left hand, draw your left hip so that both hips point to the short edge of your mat. Inhale. Even more, take the arms up, feel length in the side body. Gaze to thumbs and then smoothly exhale, place the palms, step back, plank. Lower it down. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, draw the left leg up. Place the, the toes just behind the left wrist. Externally rotate the back foot, but draw the right hip forward. Inhale, the arms draw up. Look up. Gaze the thumbs. Exhale. Draw down, place the palms, step back into plank. Lower it down. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. So I know it's that time of year where you may have a cold. If you feel something brewing, I would perhaps recommend dropping down into a child's pose, but supporting your head in your hands, your chin in your hands, so you're actually not getting such a rush towards the sinuses, okay? That's a good one to remember, everybody in your practice. It can feel kind of unpleasant um, if you are quite blocked in that area. So five of your breaths, here and down facing dog. And I'd like you to be still. When you draw your breath in, draw up from the earth. As you exhale, see if you can exhale steadily through your nose. When you next draw the breath in, can you count how many count, can you count the inhalation? And then as you exhale, can you count the same amount on the exhale? And you do those for the final breath in your downward facing dog. So total of five breaths. When you get to the base of your fifth exhalation, take your gaze to the top of the mat. Ready yourself either to step or hop to the top. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold forwards. Now because this is sun salutation B, we drop the hips. Inhale the arms together, lift them, and as you lift, keep pushing through the feet, keep the gaze upright. Then release the palms back to Tadasana. Lovely, everyone. Okay, let's do that one more time. 
Inhale, navel in and up. Let the tailbone drop, sit down into your chair and draw the arms forward. Sorry, that's on an exhale. Inhale, let the arms lift up and then exhale, fold forward. Inhale to your halfway lift. So your upper body is parallel to the floor. Exhale, fold forward. Step back into plank and lower down. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale to downward dog. Left foot to the bottom left corner, right foot behind the right wrist. Left foot externally rotates to about 11 o'clock and draw that left hip forward. 90 degree bend in your front knee. Inhale, the arms together and up, so that opens up the back of the rib cage. Gaze up to the thumbs and then exhale. Place the palms, step back, lower down. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Right foot to the right back corner, left foot behind the left wrist. Lift the torso, draw the right hip forward. Inhale, the palms come together. They lift up, keep the gaze lifting. Feel the length in the side body. And then exhale, draw down, place the palms, step back into plank. Lower down, inhale, up the dog. And exhale, into down the dog or your variation. And if you really want to, I mean, always, always in this sun salutation B, this downward dog feels a bit more of an opportunity to have a rest. Because you've created quite a lot of heat through your flowing vinyasa movements. You can drop down into child's pose if you like. Now let's take three more breaths. Samagriti. So count your inhale, please. And then see if you can measure your exhale to the same count. Can you do that three times? Can you keep the breath through the nose? Again, if you are a bit stuck in the nose, that might be challenging. At the base of the third exhalation, can you take the gaze to the top of the mat, bend the knees, keep the gaze lifted, hop or step, the feet towards the palms, inhale, halfway lift, roll the shoulders back, exhale, fall forward, inhale, let the hips drop, draw the palms together, lift them up and as you do, push through the knees, push through the soles and come to standing. Just going to turn towards you, but you can stay where you are. Hands to hips and just get a little bunny hop to separate the feet to hip width apart. Lovely. So with your palms to your waist, you can feel that lovely soft part where we join our torso and our, lo our lower limbs. I want you to inhale and feel that part lift and lengthen. As you do so, your thumbs, which are behind your waist, Press your lower back and you hinge forwards. So you see how I'm hinging only at the hips. I'm not leading with my chest, it's the hips that I'm leading with. So try and isolate the movement. Now if you have sensitive hamstrings, you may want to hold it there or go very, very gently. So if you feel pulling at the tops of the backs of your legs, go really easy or maybe even soften the knees. So if you are practicing with any crocs, if you have a book or a yoga block and your palms do not come to the ground, you can take your book or yoga block and place it so that you can start to feel what it's like to really push through the palms. So see if that is some adjustment that you like to make. Now some people like using crocs, some people really don't take to it. So see how it feels for you. Now we're going to move down a little further. If you can, take a yogi toe grip. So your first and second finger wrap right underneath the big toe. Your big toe pushes them down into the ground. Your thumb then pushes on top of your big toe. You bend your elbows and then inhale, lengthen the front body once more. Before you exhale, 
and you can you draw your chest, your ribs towards your sides. Keep your gaze slightly lifted, so keep gaze to toes, and take three breaths here. So remember that sense of yes, you're at your edge. But it's, you've gone to your edge to enjoy the view, not to scare yourself. So try and smile wherever you are in the posture and enjoy where you feel the space building, where you feel the potential growing. The base of your third exhalation, inhale and simply straighten that back. And then if it's accessible to you, and I'm going to offer another option in a moment, Lift up your toes and place your fingers underneath your toes, pointing towards your heels. Then you can put a little bit more pressure into um, the balls of the feet and you feel a bit of a stretch through the wrists. Inhale once again to lengthen the back and then exhale, take the gaze through. So now you curve your cervical spine and the gaze goes through the legs. If that isn't available to you, I'm going to give you a nice shoulder opener. So just soften at the knees and interlace the fingers behind the back, straighten the arms, and then let the um, palms fall as if they're coming behind your head. Inhale and tuck your belly where it's soft, tuck it up and keep it tucked as you exhale. And you'll find that you have um, a deeper, a more, you have more space to fold into basically. So take three breaths here. Just smile so that you're checking you're not clenching your teeth or your jaw. And that your tongue is soft, your gaze is soft. And then we're going to, all of us rise up to standing very gently. So unhook your palms if they're underneath your feet. Inhale the palms back to the waist and come back up to standing. Lovely. Enjoy your uprightness. And we're going to come into a few standing sequences now. So we're going to step the right leg, the left leg back. So the right foot is at the top of the mat, coming to triangle posture. The heel of the front foot wants to be in line with the instep of the back foot. The front foot points forward and the back foot is externally rotated to, if this is your 12 o'clock, to about 2, 2.30 but then you need to rotate your hips. So your hips are no longer pointing to the short edge of the mat. You want them to be pointing to the long edge of your mat. Let's draw the arms out and feel that tug of war so you can mobilize through the waist, front and back. And when you're ready, gently, with control in your right waist, lean down towards your right, shin, ankle, toe, and take a hold of wherever you feel you need to. Now with your left palm, just step, just gently push onto your left hip and feel it drawing openness across the hips. Then you can let that left arm blossom up. You can even use it to draw the chest open. So you'll get that sensation that you're almost leaning back against something. Inhale and take the gaze up to the nose, to the, the nose up to the thumb, so the gaze is at the thumb. And can you take five breaths here? I mean, yes, you can, can't you? I mean, it sounds like a lot. But once you get to your second breath, see if you can just let the breath and the movement really hold your focus. And at the base of your fifth exhalation, allow your gaze to go down to the floor and let the left hand drop back down to the left hip. Soften into the right leg, inhale, draw up, and then exhale, feet come through parallel, and then you reverse so that your left foot is pointing out, your right foot is at slight angle. Just checking your alignment so the heel and the instep are in line with each other. Draw the arms up, and then allow the left arm to come down. So you can even have your left forearm, palm facing up on the shin. What you need to check while you're taking your five breaths is that your left 
leg is straight. The outer edge of your right foot presses into the mat. Gaze up to the thumb or down to the earth, if that's preferable for your neck. Keep a sense of lift in your left waist. So think about the opposition. You and gravity here. You're almost combined. At the base of your fifth exhalation, Gaze down to the toe. Lower the right arm, soften the left knee. Inhale, draw up. Exhale, feet to parallel on that long side of the mat. And then rotate the feet once again. So the right foot is pointing towards the, the top edge of the mat. Bend 90 degrees into that foot, into that right leg. Once again, check your alignment, the heels in line with the mids with the instep of the left leg, the left foot. Now the left out, the outer edge of the left foot really draws down and you can feel that activate all along the chain of muscles in that left leg. So strong on that left leg. Sink into the hips a little bit and see if you can keep yourself feeling lifted in the torso as you place your right palm, right forearm, palm facing up onto your ledge of your right thigh. And then you can inhale the left arm up over the ear. Keep that sense of lift in the torso. If you are familiar with the practice and you want to go into a slightly lower variation of the posture, your right palm comes to the outer edge of the right foot. So your right um, inner elbow and knee contact each other and you take your five breaths. Each time you feel lengthening in the left side of the body, but also consider whether you can tilt your chest up to the sky a little more. And I know you're holding up in your right waist, so your torso feels extended rather than dropping down. Just lift your toes to release any tension there. At the base of the fifth exhalation, let that left hand come to the left waist. If you were all the way down, rise up onto the thigh. And everyone, press up and draw up. So again, your feet are parallel to the long edge of the mat. And we're going to rotate and take that on the opposite side. This time the left foot points to the short edge of the mat. Still your hips are facing along the long wedge edge of your mat. A 90 degree bend. Now, your 90 degrees needs to be lining up with your ankle. If it's shooting over your ankle, your stance is too short. You can inhale the right arm up and over. Now, remember about your edge. It needs to be somewhere where you can smile and breathe. Five breaths. Base of your fifth exhalation. Your right palm comes to the right waist. And you draw your torso up. And then draw your feet parallel once more. So bring your hands to your waist here. And once again, we're going to work with Udiyanda Banda. <laughs> Such a rhythmical word. And we're going to draw the navel in and up. So you breathe in, you think you feel like you're drawing upwards from your feet through your navel and you kind of get that sense of holding it there. So every banda, every time you hear that word, it's Sanskrit for lock. So there's a sense of you holding that breath, not so that you can't breathe, but so it changes the structure of your posture. So keep that sense of height and lift. And then again, hinge at the hips. So your torso comes first of all level with the air. Check your legs are edging into straightness now, push into the outer edges of the feet, and then release down towards the earth. Your palms can either come underneath you, or 
you can take that bind that we took earlier as an option in the forward fold where you interlace the fingers behind your hips so if you lift up from behind you interlace them draw the wrists together inhale let the wrists come as if they're going to touch the floor behind your head never seen it done personally but apparently it's possible if you can dislocate your shoulders i don't know <laughs> Anyway, let's come to the breath, five breaths. So once again, if you're feeling like this is too much on your sinuses, you can enjoy this posture standing up, particularly with the interlaced fingers. You can keep drawing the palms down to the earth and looking up to the sky. And you get that similar openness through the shoulder girdle. You may feel the area around your pelvis, your, the, um, your hamstrings really start to release with gravity here, even areas at the back. To come up, you'd like you to soften. If you have the binds and have palms interlaced, keep them interlaced and just look up to the sky to feel your openness in the chest. Otherwise, take the palms to the waist. Let's all do that now, palms to waist, lovely. And just slightly heel toe the feet in so you've got a shorter stance, perhaps something more like a meter in between, in between the feet. So once again, you want this stance to be along where we currently are, is along the long edge of the mat. And you can feel your hips are level here, but we're going to change their orientation. So we're going to rotate the right foot to the top of the mat. And just like warrior one, step the left, left, left foot out to the side, then draw the left hip with you. So flashlights on the hip bones, shine forwards. Either take opposite elbow behind the back, like this, or can you come to reverse prayer? Keep a sense that your back foot is pulling back, your front foot is pushing forwards. Inhale, find that lift in that lock, and exhale, lower your torso. So you can either come here, level to the earth, and start your five breaths, or you can round towards your front leg, take your forehead to knee. When you take your forehead to knee, you start to compress the uh, throat area, so you're creating another lock here, and it's said to help with metabolism. So it's quite tempting for your left shoulder to draw back, just as it's tempting for your left hip to draw back. Can you keep both of them drawing forward square? How are you doing in your breaths? How are you there? Can you smile where you are? And when you're ready, we inhale and just draw straight up. Lift up the toes and rotate on the heels. Move your left foot over to the left side of the mat. Hop your right foot over to the right side. Draw your right hip forwards. Inhale, lift up the torso. And once again, we exhale this time towards the left leg. Keep the right hip forwards, the right shoulder forwards. Level with the left shoulder and the left hip. Five breaths. How amazing you are to move through these postures. See if you can take some really simple gratitude and joy in the way that your legs are supporting you. What have your knees been through? What have your feet been through? Let softness come to your approach. Inhale and draw up. And then we're going to step, turn to the top of the mat once more and step the legs together, release the arms, Tadasana. A nice soft Tadasana. Standing, so simple, but we're lucky to be able to do it. I'm sure we all agree. So, before we feel like we're ready to go to the floor, let's come to some standing 
practice, the standing practice of our equilibrium. And I'm sure you all can't wait. <laughs> So last week I asked you to have a tea towel with you and we practiced extending the leg and externally rotating it. This week we're going to actually skip that one because there's many postures in this Ashtanga and it's nice to do a variety of them. And we're going to do a um, tree posture with a couple of variations, okay? So let's take the weight into the left leg and draw the right knee up. Externally rotate the hip and place the right foot against the left leg. Now, Drishti, I know we've talked about it before. It's a focus point. And although you're focusing on something external, it's actually the focus that's important. So that's an internal thing. So you're noticing not what you're looking at, but what it's like to look at it and feel suspended, feel equal, feel lifted. Let's take the arms down. And then if you like, you can draw them up and take five breaths in your regular tree practice, drawing shoulders down away from the ears. Now it's a beautiful, expansive posture for your ribs, for your lungs. If you want to close the eyes, close the eyes. Ooh, <laughs> I did, and I, and I did this nice wobble. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I might have made you a bit wobble a bit, excuse me. <laughs> okay, at the base of your fifth exhalation, you're going to let the arms come down and then take hold of the right ankle and I want you to place it over the left thigh, so just above the left knee. And then your right toes draw back towards your right knee. So that's important because it protects your knee. And we're going to Take palms into prayer, press against the chest and sink into our hips and bend your standing leg. Now you can extend the arms if you like and lift your navel away from your thighs. Five breaths. Now I'd like you to all try this. At the base of your fifth exhalation, I'd like you to fold down so your fingertips can come to the earth. And of course, you can bend your standing leg more so that the earth comes closer. But then, I'd like you to see if you can straighten your standing leg. So keep your right arm leg pushing into the left thigh. And see if you can come into this You've got three places of contact with the earth, so it ought to be easier than tree. But because you may not try this before, it may take a while to configure. See if you can take your five breaths here. When you're ready, release your right foot, then through the knees and come back up to standing. Perhaps roll your shoulders, maybe take a shimmy in a shake, soften through. Oh, lovely. When we take that practice into the opposite side, maybe different, it may be very different. So weight into the right leg. Let's draw the left knee up. Sorry, you saw me going into some other habits there. Externally rotate the left knee and take that left sole of the foot. So you can see it here demonstrated sole against thigh. Tree is also available sole against calf or even toes on the floor and the sole rests sort of more around the ankle area. Wherever you are your drishti will help you. Beautiful to see you blossoming. Lovely. Let's see those trees growing. Five breaths. Try and keep the hips level. So it might feel like you're dropping slightly in the left hip, but try and keep the left hip and the right hip level. And sort of feel like your arms, your branches are welcoming in the sunshine. I'm going to photosynthesize you. You're growing stronger, you're shining brightly.
Now relax the arms and draw your left ankle across your right thigh. You know where we're going, but what I'd like you to do is try not to hold too much fear or anticipation of where you're going. Try and just enjoy each posture for what it is before moving on. So you sit down and you hold in your navel as you sit down into your invisible chair. Your left toes draw back towards your left knee, your arms extend out in front or possible um, variation, palms into prayer. Your five breaths. Feel that sense of reach. It's not that you're reaching for anything, but this is you filling your potential. So you're really filling your focus at your fingertips. And then we're going to fold over that standing leg and place the palms down to the earth and take your five breaths here in your three-legged shape. Gaze is to the ankle, the toes. Lovely. Then I'd like you to melt your left foot down to the ground and walk your toes, uh, walk your heels out. So you've got just over hip width apart and toes are pointing outwards. And we're just going to sink down into a yummy scrummy malasana. So just remember, variations are, you can sit down and come back to prayer. So you still get that lift through the spine. You may feel your heels are quite lifted. If you've got a spare yoga mat or a blanket or a cushion, as mentioned on the WhatsApp group, you can just pop that underneath the ankles. Either way, five of your breath. Gorgeous. Let's sink down <sighs> and take the weight onto the floor. So we're going to now extend our legs out in front of us and enjoy a moment of symmetry in Dandasana. Start pose. Your legs are stretched out in front of you. Palms are down by the hips. And you rise up through your spine. Shoulders draw down away from your ears. Your shoulder blades come together behind your back. Five breaths. So also your toes are active, they draw back, it may lift your heels. Chin is slightly tucked. And you can really almost imagine like a lightning bolt coming to supercharge your spine here. Lovely. Nice little reset. We're going to draw the right knee into the chest now. And it doesn't have to be right close to your left. It doesn't have to be into your midline. We're going to try something a bit different. And we haven't done this posture before, but it'd be lovely to have a go with you all. So I'm just going to show you this, and then I'm just going to come to this. And I'm going to just have a look at that. So we're going to take the right arm up and extend it along the left leg. So you've got nice length in your arm and then you draw your knee back in towards the outside of your right shoulder, do you see? Then what I'm gonna do is draw the right elbow back and then wrap my right hand around my right knee. <laughs> We're going to lift up the left hand and then see if we can catch the left in the right hand. So we've got a bind. So find your edge. I'm showing you where breath and practice can take you. Does not mean you're going to get there today. The benefits of this posture are to really open up through the shoulder. So see if that's where you're finding the trouble. Because it can often be that once we know if we're a bit stiff somewhere, we can breathe a little bit of ease in. Okay, and if you can't find the bind, just let go with your left hand. 
and let your right hand just continue to try and reach back. Maybe hold on to something if you can grab your t-shirt, get that sense of a bind. So your left leg is active and drawing back. Maybe even the left heel lifts a little bit. Be interested to know after the session how you like step one. Let's come up out of that side and swap sides. So you extend the right, right leg this time and draw the left knee in towards your left armpit. So then we're going to extend, keep your right arm relaxed, extend the left hand in between the knee towards the toes and wrap around the left knee. So you get a bit of external rotation in your shoulder here. And if you can, take a hold of your left wrist with your left, with your right palm. And it might be that your wrists don't come into contact. It may just be your little fingers or you're hooking the tips of your fingers. That's all right, of course, it's all right. But you also get a little bit of a forward fold here. See if you can keep the chest lifted and the gaze to the toes. And enjoy your five breaths. All right, when you've taken your fifth exhalation, inhale, draw back up, cross your knees and roll forwards, palm come to the top of the mat and stretch back into plank. We're going to take a little vinyasa, if you like. Lower down, inhale, upward dog, exhale, downward dog. We don't hold the downward dog, we simply step the legs through, Cross over the heels again and extend the legs back out in front of you. Once again, can you draw the right knee into the chest? Let the right elbow come this time to the inside edge of the right knee. Palm is pointing upwards to the sky. This might be enough when you simply turn, but I want you to help to I want to help you to get. Uh, a little bit more space in your rotation. So, inhale and lift in the spine. So your right hand, your left hand is just behind you, but it's pushed, you're on your fingertips, so you can feel it lifting up your spine. It's helping you lift. Take your gaze over your left shoulder. Now here's an option. Extend your right palm and see if you can once again wrap around your knee. And there's a bind there too. Okay, it's only an option, a demonstration of where space and practice might lead you. Otherwise, enjoy this twist. Enjoy getting the shoulder blades to come together behind the spine. Enjoy letting the lumbar spine, the lower spine, lead the twist. So you feel openness in the belly. Your cervical spine, your neck, is the last part to follow in. So your five breaths, I hope someone's been counting. <laughs> in your twist. And then we unravel. Come to a little counter twist, so you still just take your spine in the opposite direction. Extend the legs out and then draw the left knee in. Left elbow comes inside the left knee and they push against each other. Inhale, draw the spine up and extend the right hand behind you so you can push through your fingertips and feel lift in the spine. Take your, um, if you like as well, you can extend your right hand fully behind you and then let it drop a bit further back. So that might help you feel more space in the twist, particularly in the lumbar region. And if you want to come into your bind, bend the left hand, the left elbow, lift off your right arm. And try and the challenge here is to try and keep the lift. So it's actually the lift when your palm, right palm on the floor is easier. Bring activity to your extended leg, your extended right leg. 
Five if you're soft, smiling at the edge of the cliff, breath. Lovely. Let's release out of that and take another vinyasa if you like, otherwise simply pause in Dandasana. Lower down in your plank, inhale upward dog, exhale down dog. Now I'm going to turn to the side so that you can see the next bit. Last week we did a bit of rock and rolling. Week before that we did a lot of Navasana. This week we're going to do a combination of the two. Now I just want you to check that you haven't got any furniture or obstacles behind you. Um, and yeah, because we're going we're gonna to roll. We're going we're gonna to come into plow pose. Um, if you aren't sure if you're comfortable in plow pose, um, perhaps you don't need to come all the way back. Simply roll with your knees bent. Okay, so if you're going to come into um, plow pose, I'd like you to lower down your back onto the floor and then lift your legs up into the air, straight, palms press into the earth, press through the palms and lift your hips up so that your legs are now coming over your torso. Keep your gaze between your legs. Please don't look left and right. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna rock from here. Try and keep the legs straight and lift up into the vasana. So you can hold onto your toe here. You rock up into the vasana. <laughs> it's a good one, it's a fun one. This one's a practice. And once you come up, see if you can hold this for five breaths. Gaze to toes. To come out, we're going to keep that feeling of engagement in the navel and rock back into plow pose. Extend the palms, have a couple of breaths and then we'll try it again. Let the hips rock down, keep the legs straight, catch the toes with the palms, inhale up to Navasana, five breaths. Really fun to watch, lovely everyone. Now you don't have to do all this rocking and rolling business, but even if you just come to this version of Navasana, it's a really beautiful opening feeling at the back of the legs, if you can catch your toes. If you can't quite get the toes, you can, I find it quite nice to cross your, your wrists, and catch opposite shin and opposite palm. You know, bringing your palms a little close together, but keep remembering to lift through the chest and keep remembering to gaze at the toes. Come back to your breath. I don't know how many you've done. You're aiming for five once again. Lovely. And then we're going to relax the knees, draw them into the chest, and take a couple of rolls along the mat front and back, maybe five times. Before you settle back into an easy resting position, so the soles of the feet are on the earth, your spine is laying out on the ground. Now perhaps you want to just check where you are on the mat, all that rocking and rolling can shuffle things about a bit. So we're going to go into Shavasana fairly soon. But before we do, we're just going to let the palms come out to the side and windscreen wipe the knees left to right a little bit and this will ease through your hips. As you sort of develop the movement, you can involve your neck too. So take your gaze in the opposite direction to the knee. and let the breath really slow down. So no more counting of the breath, you can let that practice drop. We're through to the final arc, the downward, downward turn of the practice now. 
And perhaps now, just for a moment before we go into Shavasana, let your soles of the feet come together and your knees fall out and you come into Supta Vadakanasana. So this is the reclined version of Vadakanasana. Because this is at the end of your practice, hopefully you're feeling heat and openness. And once again, this sense of um, gratitude for the fact that you can stick with the practice, for the fact that you are so open and willing and malleable to be here in whatever form that takes. You may like to lower your lids now and start to turn your focus really inwards and really honestly appraise whether you feel you've been kind in your practice today. How did you respond when you felt judgment arise, when you felt pressure to perform or conform? How do you respond to that? And that's a really, that is an ethical decision. Okay, and that's something that would take so much practice. How do we meet our feelings? You can spend the relaxation part of this uh, session in this posture if you like. It does tend to get a little bit heavy on the hips. So I recommend that you simply spread the legs straight a little wider than your mat. Let your toes pull out. Now just pick up your shoulders please and place them further down the mat, maybe by a millimeter or centimeter, and then ripple that down. So you you can then extend your spine, lift your pelvis off the mat and place that a millimeter or centimeter further down towards your ankles. And then you'll feel that ripple extend and perhaps your legs feel slightly longer. And you also have an increased surface area against the floor. So it's this contact with the earth that I'd really like you to connect with now. Can you release? all your sense of duty. Can you release all your sense of should, would and could? Can you let the breath be natural and unforced? And can you let your attention really try and expand into this current moment? Can you let your belly be soft? Can you become familiar with the water element in you? We're all like waves in this ocean. Can you start to feel like the ocean rather than a wave? Allow yourself to sink into that deeper sense of connectedness and being into being. If you notice resistance, notice it, and then it will probably go. It's the beauty. Keep lying there just for a moment. I have a really beautiful um, poem that I'd like to read to you while you're there. Please just let love in. Tell people how you feel and do not worry about being too much. Be too much. Care too much. Let people show up for you. Let people remind you that there is goodness in this world. Be vulnerable. Do not be afraid of what you feel. Try to find the beauty in each breakdown. Try to move forward and let go. Try to learn and believe in new beginnings despite what you've been through. Kiss the faces of your friends, hug their broken pieces back together. Laugh loudly and hope loudly and live loudly. And be gentle with yourself, be gentle with your healing. 
connect, connect, connect with every ounce of who you are, with every inch of your patchwork heart. Connect with the people who make you feel deeply. Connect with the moments that bring tears to your eyes. Connect with the things that make your hands shake. Embrace the things that make you aware of just how lucky you are to be alive. Please just connect because beautiful things are vanishing each and every day. Don't let your heart be one of them. If you want to continue your Shavasana, then you can hopefully build your sense of relaxation by ignoring the following instructions. To start to move away from your Shavasana, just take the tip of your thumb and run it across each individual fingertip. Press a little pressure into each one. Maybe do this once, twice or three times. And then take your feet to the floor by bending the knees and see if you can do a similar action with pushing the big toe and then the subsequent toes down into the mat one at a time. Doesn't matter if you can't quite locate each individual toe, but see if you can. And then you can draw your knees into your chest and let yourself embrace your knees, draw them in with your arms. Roll over onto your other side, or one side, pardon me, and let your palms become a rest for your head. So if you'd like to start to let a little bit of light in through your lowered legs, remember that you are connecting and there's ever so much information about to stream into you. It's very much our decision about how much we leave our windows and our doors open. And it's amazing how used to being overwhelmed we have become. So if you can practice being aware of your sensitivity to stimulus, to external stimulus, right here and now is a good place to start. Try and bring yourself up with a sense of awareness that you have brought with you through your practice and come back to an easy seated posture. Can you take five or so breaths, you don't have to count, but just a nice amount of breath to reconfigure to being upright and to perhaps scan through and feel, connect with yourselves, feel any sensations, note any Anything you feel like is as important to bring from your practice. Thank you so much. Oh, it's such a pleasure to have you along. Really, really hope you enjoyed the session and um, really hope that whatever benefits you find from your yoga practice remain with you in between each session. And uh, We'll be back again next time. It'll, it will come again this time next week. If you can, that would be wonderful too. Thank you. Keep well. Thank you, Emily. You're welcome. Such a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>